Hi and welcome from the beautiful Gran Paradiso National Park in northern Italy. After I have been driving around for so much in the summer in Scandinavia, I wanted to lower my carbon footprint a bit. I took the train from Zurich to Torino, afterwards I rented an electric car and after two hours of driving I parked the car, I packed my backpack with all the photography equipment and then basically went a bit more than 1000 meter in elevation up to photograph ibex at least this was the main goal and i've already been here uh, 11 years ago pretty much on the exact date and i was really i was amazed by the landscape and you get quite close to the ibex here and you have beautiful big ibex and i just had the feeling that i didn't take the most out of it uh, 11 years ago i felt like there was more options more opportunities that i just missed and i think now my photographic style has kind of improved i'm a better photographer hopefully so i want to go for some different types of picture and therefore revisit the location in this video i want to show you some of the super nice nature here the wildlife and give you some tips for wildlife photography in the mountains as well So after a bit more than 900 meters of ascent and elevation, I actually had a quick stop to put my sleeping bag, uh, some spare clothes, the necessary these things in the Rifugio where I was staying last night and will also stay one more night. Um, afterwards I had a quick sandwich outside and then I heard a marmot like while calling or uh, warning other marmots that there is danger, like an enemy around. And this can of course be people, but it can also be um, birds of prey. And there was actually a bearded vulture, a juvenile, uh, flying above. So I quickly took my R5 and tried to take some pictures, but it was not really a good setting. But I was already happy to see the bearded vulture so short after arriving. Afterwards, I hiked up, I would say, 150, 200 more meters of elevation where the ibex are. And these were really the main goal of my journey here. And I have photographed them, as I mentioned, 11 years ago, so I knew more or less where they were. But when I went up, it was not so easy. In the beginning, I didn't see any ibex at all. So I started with taking some pictures of marmots, try to blur a bit the foreground. And here, I was a bit limited by the RF 100 to 300. It was a bit short, so I put the 1.4 extender. Then I got 420 millimeter f4, which was okay. Uh, still, I could have used a bit more focal length, but it was fine. Afterwards, I continued a bit and I saw some ibex, but they were quite high up. But then I met a photographer from Milano and he told me that there were like four male ibex a bit lower if I continue to walk. So I tried that and then basically I left my backpack and I just took my 100 to 300 in one hand um, and then the RF 50 millimeter F1.8 with the R5. And in my pocket, I think I hit the 35 millimeter 1.8. And I think in the other pocket, the 1.4 extender and the spare battery. And I tried to get a bit closer to get more of this beautiful surrounding because in many places in Switzerland, you can also get quite close to the Ibex, but the places are mm, a bit more accessible. Of course, there were points yesterday in the hike where I wished I didn't need to walk up so much. But the beauty of not having a gondola is, first of all, you have a bit less people. And second, you don't see the human infrastructure so much. So you can really include the habitat more easily without having yeah, uh, power lines or uh, gondolas or huts and so on in the picture. So I tried to approach a bit more and I tried to go for some silhouettes with the mountains in the background. But it was not so easy because the um, ibex were not really on a cliff but rather a bit in a low point. And this meant that I really needed to go very low so that I could still manage to have the feet uh, of the ibex against the sky so that I had a proper silhouette. And sometimes I didn't manage and then unfortunately we only saw the body or only the head of the ibex against the sky. So I'm not 100% happy but still it was not a very bad start. Unfortunately the weather changed a bit so I didn't manage to get any um, to get any sunset pictures. So I decided to go down to the hut for the dinner. And in the early morning, I wanted to try to take some pictures of the chamois. And I remember from last time that they were more on the other side of the valley. So I woke up uh, a bit more than an hour before sunrise. And then I uh, walked to this place. Unfortunately, um, it didn't look like it was going to be a very nice uh, sunrise. There was too many clouds that were moving in over the night. 
And the second kind of small issue was that there were no animals around. So I decided to just go to a small lake that I remembered from last time and I tried to take some landscape pictures there. I only had my very small tripod with me, but it was enough for this. Um, I had my uh, 14 to 35 with a polarizer and for some of the exposures I also put an ND filter so I could really do long exposures ranging between 1 minute and 1 minute 30 so you could see the clouds moving through. Luckily there was almost no wind so I got a nice reflection of the mountains in the water. Afterwards I returned for going for breakfast and I saw like two chamois but they were quite far away, quite shy, just running away. And after breakfast I wanted to do this YouTube video. Um, it was not raining at this point and then I just left my backpack here because I saw some chamois up there. And I approached and they were really way more relaxed. So I could take uh, almost frame filling shots with 300 millimeters, but I wanted also to include more of the surroundings like the mountains in the background that still have some snow on the top. And the clouds were still kind of, they had some nice structure, they were a bit darker because at the moment it's all a bit grayish because it's raining and it's just not so interesting. You also don't see the mountains so well anymore. So I was very happy that it worked out very nicely before. And yeah, now uh, I will see, maybe I will go for a shower inside, but I was also curious to check if the eye bags are there because even with rain you can take some nice images or especially with rain because if you expose a bit longer and you find a dark background which is not so easy here you can see really see the water falling down and sometimes then the eye bags or the chamois shake their body to get rid of the water on the fur and this can also look quite cool so I also want to do that and I'm definitely happy that I have one more day to spend here in the Gran Paradiso National Park because it's a very special place for ibex because the ibex was actually extinct in most of the Alps in all of Switzerland it was extinct because uh, it was overhunted. It was hunted until extinction and the last really healthy remaining population was here in the Gran Paradiso National Park. It was the hunting reserve basically from the or one of the hunting reserves from the Italian king uh, Vittorio Emanuele II and the funny thing is that the Swiss actually they smuggled uh, a few ibex back to Switzerland um, put them in kind of a zoo or a wildlife rehabilitation center and then afterwards um, set them free in the Swiss National Park so basically all the ibex that we have in Switzerland now they are coming from here and this is also one of the reasons I wanted to come back here so um, yeah I'm looking forward to see what I can still do if it clears a bit up and I have a bit a better view, I would like to do some more, some more wide angle shots. Otherwise I will work with my 100 to 300. So sometimes I get asked how I do it with the rain and wildlife photography. Um, 
in terms of the equipment, I think very important is that you have good clothing. So below I'm still quite dry, except for my head, obviously. And then to have good shoes because it can get very slippery, both on the meadows here and obviously also on the rocks. So good shoes are an important first step. In terms of camera gear, my R5, R5 Mark II and the lenses, they should be quite fine. Um, I didn't put a lens cover before because it was not raining so much, but if I would go for an extended period, like several hours uh, with this amount of rain, I would put a lens cover. Now with the filming, I didn't really put something. I just put something a bit in front of the lens because I don't have a lens hood for this one and I don't want to have uh, water drops on the front element, but otherwise it's quite fine usually, but I don't take any, um, yeah, do it on your own risk. What also works is putting a small shower cap over smaller cameras, but for the bigger ones you uh, yeah, need a lens coat or something, a rain cover from lens coat or something. Um, the backpack is still fine, it depends a bit on the backpack if you need a rain cover or not. Um, what is really important is if you go in, uh, just put the stuff out of the backpack so that it can dry. I have a microfiber towel with me for, well, it was more thought for myself, but I will use it for the camera to just dry it a bit and then let it in the open. And usually this works quite fine.